video will clarify all your confusion around expressions and customs when you're trying to meet some French speakers. With some simple do's and don'ts, you'll be able to confidently expand your circle of French language speakers. So let's say you've been talking to someone for a while and you want to arrange a hangout with them. Let's first go over how to navigate making plans. Whether you want to say when will we see each other or when will we meet, regarder and voir are not going to cut it. I know in English we use to see to mean both to see something and to see someone, but in French you need to use some different verbs. Instead, try to use se rencontrer or se retrouver to say to find one another or to meet one another, or se voir to mean to see one another. Je suis Stacy et elle la duchesse Margaret. On s'est rencontrés il y a deux ans et on a échangé nos vies pour toujours. Once you decide on an activity, you might want to reinforce that you're looking forward to seeing someone. When I was trying to arrange a rendezvous in Paris, I was really confused when I suggested something and they responded with Ouais, je suis chaud. I mean, that'd be great, but they weren't referring to how attractive they were. My friend actually had to tell me that je suis chaud or être chaud is slang for saying I'm down or let's do it. If you want to sound a little sophisticated and courteous, you can say oui avec plaisir, but other ways to casually reinforce that you're looking forward to seeing someone are j'ai hâte de te voir or on hâte de te voir, which means I can't wait to see you, ça me plaira, ça me plaît bien, I'd like that, that'd be nice, or you can simply say je suis enthousiaste to say that you're excited. Just remember, please, please don't say je suis excité because it has mature connotations that are not appropriate for a platonic context. Navigating formal versus informal speech can be difficult for French learners, and sometimes there are gray areas on which to use when. For hangouts or dates, it's typical to use informal language, so you use the do form, especially with younger folks. This is simply because it sounds a little clunky to use the new form of verbs. I know French classes and textbooks will teach you that the on subject is one, or is a general subject, but in reality it's used instead of nous because the conjugations are just shorter. On peut versus nous pouvons. One thing that can get confusing is when you hear the other person address you with vous. You might be concerned that you're not addressing the other person correctly. But for this, you need to remember that vous is not only the you formal, it also means you plural. Often when I hung out with other French speakers in Paris, we would get to talking about differences in culture and they would say things like vous, vous faites comme ça. But they meant vous les Américains, not vous formal. So in general, do pay attention to context and don't really use the formal speech. If someone is using formal speech with you and you'd prefer them to use informal because it's more casual and comfortable, you can say tu peux me tutoyer, tu peux me tutoyer, which means you can address me with informal speech. Pareil, je peux tutoyer, tu te souviens de moi Ils pourront vous proposer de les tutoyer s'ils le souhaitent. Of course, something that goes hand in hand with informal speech are texting shortcuts. You might feel really confident in your French and then receive a text from someone and have no clue what it means. So I'll go over some of the basic texting shortcuts that you might come across. If you do want to adapt to French speakers, it's important to use these shortcuts from time to time and not use full forms all the time. MDR. The full form of this is mort de rire, and this is the French form of LOL, LMAO, haha. And you should try to use this so that your brain stays in French mode even when you're laughing over text. Tu es becomes t'es, think t'es libre, t'es occupé, and je suis becomes je Notice that there is a pronunciation difference that you won't see in the spelling. It's not je suis, it's je suis versus je suis. Similarly, tu as becomes ta. Try saying it, ta. Shui, te, and ta are all really, really common in both texting French and spoken French, so try it out the next time you are practicing your French. Dispo means disponible or available, and similarly, libre means libre or free, so these are great to use when you want to say that you're free to hang out. Putting these shortcuts together, we get te dispo instead of tu es disponible, and te dispo just has so much more of a fun, casual ring to it. Après is short for après midi. Resto is short for restaurant. And do note that in the spelling form, restaurant is not spelled with an O, even though the shortcut resto is. T Q T t'inquiète. This one has a lot going on. Even though t'inquiète technically means you worry yourself, in French it has come to mean don't worry because tu ne t'inquiète pas is so clunky. Notice that because this is an imperative phrase, 
the S is dropped even though it's a du form. And I've seen both t'écoute and t'inquiète used in texting French. When you're ready to suggest a time to hang out, make sure you don't use the 12 hour clock and instead use the 24 hour clock. You should also get used to saying the times in the 24 hour clock as well. So 4 p.m. would be 16 heures. And there's no such thing as the 12 hour clock in French. So you have to use the 24 hour clock to express times that are basically afternoon. One thing to know is that you never say the 12s in French. Noon is à midi, and this works for midi 30 as well. And for midnight, you say à minuit. There's no such thing as 12 heures and 24 heures. If you want to suggest a time, you could phrase the question like 19 heures, ça marche? Even though marcher means to walk, one of the other more common uses of marcher is to work, as in, does that work? Ça marche pour toi? As you can see from these simple sentences, in French, there's no such thing as on Tuesday, on Saturday. You just say the name of the day. On se voit jeudi. Similarly, there's no in the morning or in the evening. You can just say je te vois samedi matin. Tu as en course dimanche soir. To finish it off, you can use the phrase à tout à l'heure, which means see you then or see you later. And this is frequently abbreviated as à tout. Ok, super. Bon, bah, à tout à l'heure. Merci. As you can see, sounding like a native in French is all about the subtleties, and if you're still a little nervous about putting yourself out there, you should check out Fluent U. Fluent U is a platform full of real-world videos so that you can see grammar points and vocabulary used in context. Each video has interactive subtitles, a video dictionary, and other cool features like flashcards and quizzes so that you can get speaking just like a natural. I found this video to be quite fun because even though the speaker speaks quite fast, we can see what she's saying in the interactive subtitles. We can see how she uses bon in a phrase like this. And we can also learn new phrases like redank and see what the translation is down below so that we are not translating each word directly. Watching videos like this really helps me see how native speakers actually speak, understand their tone and their accent a little bit better, and get used to using fun expressions that I want to learn. There's a link to a free trial for Fluent U in the description, so do check it out so you can see your language skills skyrocket. Now once you're ready to actually hang out with the person, let's go over some tips for your actual meetup. Manners are very important in French, and it's really important that you greet the other person properly. Although the pandemic may have changed this, it's typical to faire la bise when you meet someone, and this is typically a kiss on each cheek, even though depending on region it might be three or four. I know this might be a little intimate for some people, but la bise is just how you greet people in France, and everyone does it, no matter gender and age. Especially in France, don't greet someone with a hug unless you know them really well, and a firm handshake is pretty uncommon as well. If you want to be fancy, you can say enchanté to mean nice to meet you, but a lot of people just greet people with salut, ça va. In general, it's really important to say bonjour or salut before you start talking to the other person, and if you don't, people will point it out to you. One of the most common questions in the US when you meet someone new is, so what do you do for work? Or what's your job? Don't deal with this with a French person. Especially in France, jobs are not seen as a defining part of your identity, and a lot of people really don't care what your job is. Instead, do lead with something about your hobbies, arts, culture, sports, politics, because people in France really love to have discussions and debates. Some examples of questions you can ask are, T'as visité le nouveau musée d'histoire? C'était comme le match de foot hier soir. Or, que fais-tu dans ton temps libre? Of course, you'll understand yourself what you should and shouldn't discuss once you get to know someone, but in general, French people tend to stray away from any personal topics right away, and even things like family can fall under that umbrella. I know whenever I hang out with someone, I really like it when they tell me that they had a good time afterwards, whether it's just as relieving or over text. So hopefully you did have a good time, and some ways to express that are J'ai passé un bon moment. J'ai passé un bon moment. But I thought passé uses être for passé composé, not avoir. Well, you're partially correct. If your body is physically passing by something, like Je suis passé par un magasin, then you use être. But if you're talking about a thing like un bon moment, you use avoir. J'ai passé un bon moment. À refaire. Let's do this again. Faire means to do, and you can often add re in front of verbs to mean redo. So, refaire, to do again, or let's do this again. 
You can keep it simple. C'était sympa. That was nice. Merci d'avoir joué le jeu jusqu'au bout. C'est vraiment sympa. C'était génial is another common phrase as well. I know that sounds a little over the top, but génial is a pretty common adjective in the French language. Whereas Americans may use their voice expressions and inflection to express that something was awesome. This is more uncommon in French, so you'll get a hint of how they feel from their vocabulary. C'était génial. So if you think this video is génial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. This is a pretty subtle don't, but don't say c'était bon. The differences between bon and bien are a little bit confusing, but one way to think about it is bon is used for things, whereas bien is used for feelings. That's not an exhaustive definition, but that's why we say bon moment to describe moment, a thing, but we say c'était bien to describe our feelings about an interaction. Before we leave you, you must be wondering, how exactly do you meet French speakers? The biggest don't of this video is probably this. Don't shy away from putting yourself out there. I spent a few months in Paris, and I too was really intimidated from meeting French speakers at the start, but it ended up being so fun, and it drastically improved my language skills, and it really made my experience 10 times better. For remote websites, there's Conversation Exchange, My Language Exchange, and Interpals as some ways you can find a French language exchange partner. You can also find Facebook groups for French language learners or even language enthusiasts where you can teach someone your native language and they can help you out with French in return. The group I used to make friends in France was Shut Up and Go and I've heard really great things about the Yes Theory community as well. You might not exactly find French people in these groups, but it's a great stepping stone if you're perhaps an intermediate speaker and want to get used to practicing your French without the intimidation of a native speaker. Dating apps are also not a bad place to look. It's simply a way of meeting people. And in my experience, you can find dates, but you can also find people that are just looking to make friends. If you're looking to relocate to France or are going to live there long term, it's also helpful to follow some creators that have undergone the process already and can give you some tips. Some of my favorite creators are Damon Dominique, Nathaniel Drew, who also has tips on making relationships in other countries, which could be relevant for you, and The Purple Palace. All of these people have worked on their French and frequently talk about their experiences as a non-native and how they went about making friends with French people. In fact, we even have a free PDF linked below on how to find the perfect French conversation exchange partner. And if you want to keep building your language skills, check out this video on 30 transition words and phrases in French.